uh, I'm going to start by saying congratulations on the movie. Uh, the best I can say about it is it's bigger and better than the first one. All right, we'll take it. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I really mean it, though. Um, I think people are going to... I think a lot of people thought maybe you had, like, a shitload of money on the first one. And, right. You know, like... And the truth is, you did a lot with a little. Um, with yeah. it, With this one... This is like huge compared yeah. to the first one right. in terms of set pieces, yeah, locations. Totally. It's massive. Yeah. Um, without giving away the actual number, how much more though? Sixty million. <laughs> so basically, we had thirty-four on the first one, right? Sixty on this one. So yeah, both movies combined um, are less than most <laughs> movies. You know, I, I was so going to say I was going to say that it's crazy to me. Like uh, you do more in this movie in terms of like. It looks like you have a hundred and something million dollars mm-hmm. with the amount of sets you have. Yeah, sure. Yeah. So how the fuck did you do it? Sorry yeah, for my it's, language. It's about being smart, you know. I mean, it's about you know doing more for less, you know. Um, having a background in VFX helps because you know what you can get away with and you you know where you can get the biggest bang for your buck on, you know. Um, but a lot of it is going out into real places, you know, utilizing sort of real rust and real grime and real things that are already there and then building on top of it, you know. Uh, my production designer Dan Durant, you know, came in and. We went and scouted all these great locations, which is kind of the fun thing about this movie is that we get to visit a lot of different locations, you know, which is fun. Um, and so we found these great places that we built onto or put green screen up for Weta, you know, the best in the world, you know, to come in and really add a whole another level of scope and scale to this thing, you know. But yeah, it's uh, we actually have, you know, very few VFX shots in the movie too. It's like 591 or something, it's like 600 basically VFX shots in the movie, even though it's going to feel like a big VFX movie. Um, so yeah, it's like, you know, the same thing like a Jurassic Park, man. It's like there's actually 60 or 30-something uh, uh, actual VFX shots in the movie, but it feels like more. It's just, it's about how you use it, you know, how you use the tool, you know? Well, I, the thing is, this is, I'm going to give you props because a lot of people don't understand the bat. A lot of people can't pull off what you did. Mm. And I think that it's a real uh, credit to you, pat on the back, for making this movie. Not just me, an awesome team around me, too. But you, you know what I mean, though. Yeah. It's Some people just can't pull it off. And yeah. I, I'm not going to mention those movies. Sure. But, uh, I know which one you're talking about. But there's a few. Yeah, I think it's very important, too. And it's kind of my big MO thing, too, is I want movies to cost less because it's less pressure on my back. It's less pressure on everyone's back. The movies turn profitable. There's two things that I care about. It's entertaining an audience and being profitable for the studio. Sometimes those things don't don't work, yeah. but we try really hard to make that happen because if they're profitable, I get to do what I want to do. I can they can get off my back. I can I can make can take choice take chances. You know, I can not do the safe thing. Um, it, you know, being in a lower bracket lets you kind of do things a little differently. You know, and take chances. So it's definitely a big goal for me to. I don't want that big giant pressure of a gigantic budget that you know the board members are going to want to see back, you know? You, you, I want you to remember you're saying this now. Yeah. Because my prediction I've is... I've been saying it forever. Right. I'm predicting within five years you're going to have one of those big, big budget movies. And we're if gonna... I do, it'll all be because it's visual effects. <laughs> right. But you know what I'm saying. That, that's my prediction. Is I gonna... have a few that will be expensive. Right. But it's going to look like, you know... Again, hopefully it'll look like we have a lot more than we actually do. Uh, no, I, listen, I, I, I agree with what you're saying, and it, it's so important, and a lot of people don't realize when you are spending 60, you can take chances that yeah, a 150 right. million movie can't, can't take. Do. Exactly, right. You, know, you, could, you have just a certain amount of money that you have to make. You, know, you have to get a certain amount of audiences in that theater. Um, and if, hopefully we'll do what we did in the last one. You know, was it the last one, uh, 34, 34 million dollar budget, we made 340 something. Forty-eight million dollars, you know, globally in the, sure. in the box office, ten times this budget. That's a huge success. We were like the studio's most profitable movie of that year, and a year of like X Men and, and, and Planet of the Apes and all these great movies. And so I, I you know, I attributed that probably more to the sort of the concept and, and, and the actors and the characters, you know. And so we just try to you know continue that in this one, you know, and just focus on you know heart and soul and then spectacle on top of that, you know. How long was your first cut of this film? Versus two, what people are seeing. Two and a half hours, which is pretty respectable. I thought no, I was going to live there. Was it? Yeah, I was going to say, was that an assembly cut or an actual cut? That was, they're both the same, basically, for me. You know, the assembly and the cut is, is pretty close, you know. There's going to be plenty of stuff that's like, uh, my director's cut was 217, you know what I mean? You could call it maybe the assembly is 230, something like that. I mean, that had some stuff that was left out. And then I put stuff back in, and this still got it down, and then we just keep, you just keep trimming away. You take out five seconds here, five seconds here. That's the that's the dangerous spot though. Right towards the end, when you start lifting out these little things just for time, you start kind of losing some of the heart and soul of things. So we're just hoping that we haven't done that. Um, but there'll be a lot of great deleted scenes on the movie. 
uh, on the DVD. But uh, yeah, we ended up at you know 204, which is a, I think a respectable number for the scale of the movie itself. You know, it makes it go fast. You know? My my question is, are you thinking about doing a director's cut like your 217 cut? Could that be on the Blu-ray or not at all? Don't think so. I think I like the idea of one movie that exists. Period. You know, and it is what it is. Um, even if there's things that I regret taking out, it, those those scenes will be on the DVD to to watch. But I like the idea of it being just the movie that exists that the world sees is what it is. You know what I mean? I'm not, I don't want to go back and change anything. You know what I mean? How many minutes of deleted scenes will be on the Blu-ray? It's probably 20 minutes or so. You know? Really? It's probably a significant amount. You know, a lot of stuff will be obvious while we cut it. But it's still kind of fun to see, you know. And then some stuff are, you know, it's it, it's some really great scenes too. They're really great character scenes um, that unfortunately just fell in the wrong place in the story where pacing was important. You know what I mean? Where there's, there's there's sections in the movie where we do slow down. I mean, it's an action adventure movie, but we do slow down. We take the time sometimes to just breathe and not not be kind of hitting you over the head with action and, and big music. And sometimes. It's a fine line when you get into that zone. You have to kind of speed things up sometimes, and sometimes that means you have to lift out a few things. But, um, you know, that's, that's the nature of making movies. The first one had it too. So. A lot of people asked me on Twitter uh, when I mentioned I was going to talk to you, uh, what is the status of you doing the third film? There's a good chance. <laughs> um, yeah, we're working on it right now, basically. You know, we're actually shooting February um, and then release in the next February. So well, it'll be another tight run. But uh, we've got a good idea. And basically, this I was movie, gonna say that is a pretty tight. Well, round. this movie in particular. I mean, when the movie came out last, the first movie in September, I was already in Albuquerque. I was four weeks away from shooting. You know, so it, it was. It's been basically a long haul so far. And you know, we started shooting basically in late October, um, and then uh, finished the movie in August. You know, so it's like what ten months or something. You know, so we finished this movie really quickly. I, it was as soon as I delivered my last VFX shot, you know, I graded the last thing. It was 11 o'clock at night or whatever it was. I went home as soon as I walked out of that grading suite. Woo, you just feel like all this energy that you've had for the last year and a half or whatever, um, you know, it just drains out of you and you just feel it like, why am I so tired? Um, but yeah, so we're, we're, we're working on the third one right now, working to make it even better and even cooler and, um, and doing the same thing we did on, the list, on, on this last one where it's a different movie. It's gonna be a different kind of an engine, a different kind of genre almost, and a different, you know, sort of, uh, you know, color palette and, and, and terrain. It's gonna be cool. It's gonna be very, very cool, I think. Do you know where you're, assuming everything goes according probably to plan? Vancouver. I was gonna ask you where you shoot. Yeah, probably Vancouver. It's gonna be a very different movie. It's, uh, we're not gonna be in the same kind of setting anymore. We're gonna go a little bit more future and do something a little gritty, a little film noir almost, and it's gonna be cool. Uh, it's also a lot of forests up there, and a lot of uh, a, lot a lot of, of that too. A lot of outdoorsy things. Yeah, and you know, I don't know. I'm, I'm, we're we're expecting to go to Vancouver. I don't know yet exactly, but uh, you know, that's kind of the goal. We'd like it to be there because a lot of things that we need are there. Well, they, I think they have a tax rebate up there, so that also that's another thing too. And that's the reality of making movies today too. Is like you, you know, I'd love to shoot in L.A. To be honest, it has everything I need. But you know, that it's I get it. The studios, you know. Whether it's a good idea or not for the for the industries in the different places that offer these rebates, uh, the studios are stupid to not take advantage of them. You know, so that's why they only make movies where there's rebates. You know? Dude, I was just in Abu Dhabi, um, and sure. we had a whole thing where they're doing a thirty percent tax rebate yeah. on anything that's shot there. Vancouver sometimes is forty. That's insane. If you're VFX related. Oh, because if you do your VFX in yeah. Vancouver, it's called the Dave credit. Yeah. There it is. Because that's I'll, significant. You know, and that uh, can, on a big giant movie, that's a lot. Well, it's also, a, a lot of people don't realize, it just adds a lot to what you're able to do. Yeah. And totally. it just, ex, you know, expands the scale and scope. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, exactly. And like I said, I'm not that I'm for it, but I understand why the studios, you know, use it because it's there. Well, I mean, yeah. at least, I mean, you're based in L.A., so it leaves, the Vancouver L.A. flight is not that bad. Yeah, especially now. I've got a little baby now, and, and it'd be nice to be able to, you know, see them occasionally as she's growing up. You know, I literally, I, while I was doing my cut, you know, I had a baby. So it's been a it's been a, a hectic past uh, couple months. <laughs> um, what is going on? Uh, I guess you're going to be with 20th Century Fox a little bit because I just read the other day that there's a project that's in development. Indeed. How did that come about? Um, yeah. So I, I and, really well, ruin. What's like ruins going to right? There's a few other things too. Um, yeah. I mean, I love. I love those guys like Cameron and Spielberg and Zemeckis and those guys that basically found a home at a place, and create, you know, fostered a great relationship with the studio, and that's the family, that's the team, and that's where we're going to stay. So I'm a very loyal guy in that way, and they've been really Fox has been very gracious and generous to me, um, and so we're gonna you know we're gonna make movies together, you know, 
and uh, and I saw that book, uh, you know, Fall of Gods, and the artwork and the story, and uh, I wanted it. <laughs> so <laughs> I said, you know, will you buy this for me? And, and they did. And so we're working on it now, and it's something cool, man. I could, I could do something like, you know, like a Sergio Leone, like, you know, spaghetti western thing almost with it, you know, or like, um, you know, something really dark and kind of cool, but sort of, you know, um, it's going to be epic and spectacular, but it's a very small story on a big canvas, very much like we're doing these, with these movies, you know. Um, you kind of relate to this little very intimate sort of, you know, heartfelt thing, but around us is this huge, you know, epic kind of fantasy world. It could be really cool. It could be really different, you know, and, and I, you know, I probably won't be doing the superhero thing. You know, it's just not, I'm not, I don't have a lot of interest in that, so this is a chance to do something that's, you know, a little more magic-based, a little bit more, you know, cool spectacle, but also maybe a little more adult, too, which would be fun, you know? Do you envision, after finishing the Maze Runner trilogy, taking on a property that's another franchise, or do you see yourself doing, like, a lot of one-picture things? I don't know. There's a lot, I, I, I love creating worlds, you know, and I love kind of, you know, movies that feel bigger than they are, you know, so that kind of says franchise, so I kind of like starting franchises in a way, you know, and hopefully I'm as lucky as I've been with the major one, I think, to do that, but uh, I kind of like that, I like being the sort of the author you know, of those things rather than jumping on to someone else's, you know, thing, you know what I mean? Sure. So, you know, the opportunities are there, but I don't know, we'll see. Uh, well, I'm going to focus on this next movie, make it good, and then we'll see what happens. Do you envision... Uh I know you must be a proponent of IMAX like I am. Yeah, Do you envision it. incorporating shooting any IMAX for the third one? Interesting. Um, possibly. I mean, I don't know. It's like it, the truth is, IMAX is going digital too. I love digital. You know, I love film too. But there's a way to make digital look like film too. You know, there's a way to have that kind of gritty realism and, and use natural light. You just have to do it differently. Um, and this last one we shot, we're the first one at Fox, I think, to do this. We shot Open Gate from the, on the Alexa, which basically means I'm shooting basically, my, my resolution is around 34, 14, um, which is almost 4K, basically. But I also, it means it gives me, uh, you know, this extra little 10% on all my frames. So I, any shot, any time, I could go and just zoom out a little bit or move over a little bit without blowing up and doing that. It was a great, great, great tool. I loved using it. I'm going to do it again on the next one. Um, but, yeah. I mean, uh, the truth is that the thing I love about IMAX is not so much the resolution and, this, and that, it's the scale of the screen, it's the sound, and it's the picture quality, and that's what I love about it. And you know, now I'm a huge fan of this Dolby Vision stuff, it's fantastic, this laser projectors, you know, that are true blacks, true whites. The thing about people don't realize with digital projection is that your blacks are not black, they're gray, and your whites aren't really white, they're kind of off-white. You know what I mean? And I love that the biggest thing that you could you could do for, for picture today is contrast and brightness. Um, and laser projectors give you that. You know what I mean? It, 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 it's, it's, it's a perceived uh, resolution scale um, because of the contrast is so nice. You know what I mean? That's actually what kind of resolution is anyway, really, is contrast. But um, uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's something I'd hope would really kind of pick up is this new projection stuff. You know? I saw the laser projection uh, thing at the IMAX Hollywood Highland Theater, sure. and my jaw hit the ground. Yeah, it's amazing. It's like it's bright. It's super dark in the lower left and yeah. upper right. It's amazing. It's crazy. It's a, it's really really great. It's a great experience. You feel like you're there. And on the same same thing on the on the home front is this new HDR stuff that's coming out. Now I did an HDR version of the Maze Runner, and it's awesome. It's really cool. It's high dynamic range stuff. Um, it's not gimmicky. It doesn't have to be gimmicky. But it really, again, it gives you deep blacks, bright whites, and it just feels nice. It's what you want to see, you know? Um, so it's cool. Yeah. I would imagine that down the road, after the third film is done, Fox is going to want to put out, like, the ultimate Blu-ray box yeah. set. Yeah, maybe. Or whatever the format is at that time. Uh, are, have you saved a few nuggets from the first one and the second one that could go in, like, that ultimate set? Oh, yeah, there's plenty. Yeah, there's plenty of that. Who knows? Maybe. We'll see. Actually, what's really cool is, that, especially the second one, what we did is we designed it so you could just butt them up together. No credits or nothing. Just start the movie and go, you know, which would be a fun way to watch. And I've seen the movie kind of that way already. It's really cool, the way it kind of ends and then just picks back up. And that would be fun to kind of somehow string it together so it's all one huge, like, six-hour, you know, saga. Well, that that's actually leads me into my other thing, which is the third film. This one starts right when the last one ended. The next one won't. That's what I was asking. Yeah, this next one will be cool because we're going to cut maybe a year later. Yeah, so it'll be cool. So some things have happened off screen, which is going to make the movie feel even bigger. It's going to be cool. Uh, I'm almost out of time. In fact, I am out of time with you, but I'm going to. There's only you only have one interview left, so we're going to play a quick yeah. game. Uh, you've maybe seen it on the site. It's called Save or Kill. 
We're okay. going to play the abridged version. All right. One of these things you can save. One of these is a race from existence forever. Okay. What do you save? Oh, dear. It is a personality test. Okay. Uh, okay. Star Wars or Star Trek? Uh, save Star Wars, right? Kill well, Star Trek. You, again, it goes both ways. Yeah. Uh, Game of Thrones. Star Wars is an easy one, to be right. honestly. Sorry, sorry, Star Trek fans, but I'm a Star Wars guy. Uh, Game of Thrones or Breaking Bad? Oh, that's a tough one. <laughs> oh. Okay, I'll say save Game of Thrones because I want to see where it goes. But Breaking Bad is probably the greatest TV show on the planet. Um, so, you know, I can kill that now that I've seen it. Okay. <laughs> um, the Wire or Mad Men? Uh, save The Wire. Han Solo or Indiana Jones? Ah, uh, what? Duh. I already saved Star Wars, so I've already got Han Solo. So I'll go with, I'll save Indiana Jones. The Beatles or the Rolling Stones? Beatles, save them. Uh, NSYNC or the Backstreet Boys? Save NSYNC? I don't know, that's a tough one for me. I'm not, I'm not into either of those really, so. Uh, I'm a soundtrack guy, that's all I listen to is soundtracks, I'm lame. That's not lame. Uh, Harry Potter or Lord of the Rings? Huh. I'll save Harry Potter. Iron Man or Captain America? Um, I'll save hey, Iron Man. Uh, this is definitely for you. Twilight or Fifty Shades of Grey? <laughs> uh, gosh, I don't know. Save Twilight? I don't know. It was just for, just for which. <laughs> I'll save Twilight. That's a good answer. Uh, DC or Marvel? This could get you in trouble, so I'll be careful. If you want to skip this one, I'll let you... I'll skip it. Right. Maybe DC. I'll save DC. Uh, I kind of like the darker aspect of, of DC. I like, listen, I love both of them, and I'm very excited to see where both go. Yeah. Uh, Back to the Future or Ghostbusters? Ooh, ooh. Um, I'll save Ghostbusters. Zelda or Mario? Hmm. Save Zelda. My last one. Uh, and this one's brutal, and I make no apologies. It's brutal. Uh, Scorsese or Spielberg? Oh, Spielberg. <laughs> save, save Spielberg. Do you have a favorite? Spielberg. No, no, but I mean, do you have a favorite Spielberg? Oh, movie? Yeah. It's probably Jurassic Park. Uh, I love all his movies, but Jurassic Park was the one that really got me making, wanting to make movies, you know? Yeah, I mean, it's phenomenal. Yeah, that was the one for me. Uh, so you're saying that down the road, if they offered you a Jurassic Park movie, that could be a something that really... I don't know. Cool. Maybe. Maybe. Just throwing it out there. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, let me hit stop. Thank you so much for yeah. your time, sir.